Good morning, good evening, good night, wherever you may be watching this transmission. It is I, Mike Martins. Welcome to a very important article piece here I really want to share with you guys. It's called The Decade in BC, right? It's province of British Columbia, but it goes for everywhere else. What costs more and what costs less, okay? While many items have risen in cost, the price of some goods have actually dropped. That's very interesting to see. Let's take a look here to see British Columbians are paying out a lot more for some goods and services compared to a decade ago but they're also saving on others what are we saving on like cable television because no one has it anymore I'm just being circa or electricity because half the homes are empty and owned by foreign investors and there's no hookups to them so there's I guess people saving money because they're not hooked up to the grid anyways let's find out with the end of a decade almost here British Columbians can reflect on some of the ways price have changed have hampered or helped their daily lives. This is from StatsCan data. So here we go. Consumer price index is up 14%. That's from StatsCan. So you got to multiply it by 1.6 plus 3 to get a proper number. I'm just joking, but it, it, I wouldn't trust anything. It's Consumer price index should be around 18 to 22% in my opinion. Let's move on to median incomes. Meanwhile, the growth of medium, uh, median income across BC was 12% from 2005 to 2015. Those numbers are tied to the census, which is why they don't match the same 10 years for the CPI. So here's the median income. Uh, the, median, the median household income was 62372 in 2005. Now it's 69995 in, in, in at 2015. So you got 10 years there. Now, let's say the rate of inflation is at 2%, which is, which is not. It's a lot more. But let's say the rate of inflation is at 2%. You're looking at a 20% increase uh, or a 20% 20, 20 devaluation uh, in your currency, if you want to see it that way. Or you could see it as a 20% uh, increase in your pay should have happened, not 12%. But again, I'm just being very conservative sticking it at 2% inflation, which is not. Because when you look at the price of housing and the price... Now they're trying to say, oh, no, housing doesn't count. Housing's only for the rich elite now. The housing doesn't count. Don't be silly, Mike. Then they're going to say that about cars, and they're going to say that about everything. Hey, they're going to even say that about when you go buy clothes. Groceries. This is important because to help sustain life on Earth, we need to eat. And if we can't eat... Uh, air, water, and food are the three things to help sustain life on Earth. One of the one of the categories where British Columbians are likely to have noticed the biggest change is the cost of food and beverages. Mitchell says the increase in fresh produce and meat has been noted across the country over the past decade. The main factors driving the increase, she says, are exchange rates because most of our produce comes from the United States. What, we can't produce anything here in Canada? Transportation prices and difficulties with growing seasons driven by uh, inclement in, in inclement weather. Okay, so there was this whole greenhouse. I did this whole off-grid living, um, building a village off-grid and, and creating greenhouses to grow food all year round and blah, blah, blah. There was actually a project in the, in the late 60s, early 70s in Canada to build like several acre of greenhouses, right? It was going to be funded, private funded, and they, they one of the municipalities or provincial uh, entities. I'm not too sure exactly on the project how how it was basically to set up green greenhouses, right? To sell potatoes, to to grow uh, 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 like even oranges and and limes and avocados, and it was going to be in Canada, and it, it was going to naturally heat itself with sun. And solar wasn't out at the time, but they were looking at wind power and blah, 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 generators. But you don't need too much when you have a lot of open glass and when you got sun 360 days of the year. That's enough to warm green greenhouses. And this project was kind of back and forth on the table. And then a lot of red tape just went in and just shut them down, shut down their deal. Just like, I don't know if you guys remember the, 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 the whole death of the electric car thing back in the 80s. When the electric car should have been developed and produced and and, and technologically advanced over the 80s which basically they pulled the plug on there's a whole documentary on that but there was a whole this whole big greenhouse thing where they were gonna have a lot of agriculture this that and canada's got the space for it we could do it and then it got shut down quick in a heartbeat it would have created jobs it would have created of our own self-sustaining food and kept food prices uh, uh fairly priced but no 
they decided to import our groceries in instead or, or our produce in, instead and when we could just do it ourselves right yeah so that's that story here's the groceries right here uh so uh most importantly 2008 so 2020 20 here's the differences here you can see it flashing by an apple is a buck almost a buck it should be 59 cents in 2008 a four gallon of uh, uh, four liter jug of milk is 244 359 but that's the cheapest milk though i buy like good milk like and it costs me like 10 bucks for the for milk for i think it's a two liter glass bottle and then you got your one one uh, kilogram strip loin roast thirty seven dollars today, and it used to be uh, today. No, in twenty eighteen, and it used to be twenty three. But mind you, why is this thing opening? I don't know why. Hold on, guys. I'm not sure, but I got a program just jumping in my face here. I'm not sure why it's doing this. Hold on, I'm just trying to escape this. I'm really sorry about this, guys. I'm I'm really. Really, really sorry about this. I just just decided to open it just to... Okay. Okay, utilities. Another large price increase in BC over the past decade were utilities, such as internet and electricity. The cost of internet to operate internet hasn't gone up. The, the price of consuming internet has gone up for us. Nothing has changed. These guys, uh, basically now they're charging for hookups too. And the reason why we're seeing a huge spike in Canada on our internet service, hydro bill, and natural gas is because of hookups. There's there's an estimated 40,000 uh, empty homes right now uh, uh, in Vancouver, uh, Vancouver Lower Mainland area. 40,000 that don't have any hookups to them. So what did what did the electrical companies and gas companies have to do? They got to charge everybody else more. It's like all the bad drivers in Vancouver. You got a bunch of drivers in Vancouver, a bunch of loser drivers that can't drive. Ah, driving everywhere, right? And they have no idea where they're going. They're blind. Okay, and then, and then, and then, we in small towns actually have to pay an increase in our car insurance because they can't drive. The amount of hit and runs is phenomenal in Vancouver. Hit and runs are phenomenal. But I, I, you know, what, what are you going to do about it? So there's a, a, a lack of hookups going around. So what did they do? They raised the price on it for us. Is the cas the price of gas, natural gas, um, gone up respectively in the last ten in, in ten years? A bit, but not enough to 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 to, to charge you twenty one dollars more a month. That's like two hundred and forty dollars a year more. Hydro bill electricity this is this is a this is beautiful 38 bucks to 50 bucks nobody pays that everyone pays 110 200 dollars. i don't know where they're getting these these internet 75 where are they smoke oh, give me a break maybe because it's 29 that's 2018 i don't think so transportation costs so here it is guys 65 uh, liter uh, tank of gas 84 dollars and 44 cents we're paying for right now with a 60 dollar barrel of oil and in 2008, when a barrel of oil was $130 a barrel, we were paying $70.95. Woo! When they can't make it on the oil sales, they get you at the pump. Yeah! And the average car went up, of course. It's all plastic resin garbage. And that's why people are picking up these old Camaros, these old sports cars, because they're sick and tired of this, the, the, this rubber oil crap and those new car smells smell like crap for months and years and transit yeah whatever okay housing so two bedroom apart monthly rental two thousand and thirty four dollars now on average and one thousand five hundred and seven that's actually very cheap oh yeah but the rental yeah and then uh owned accommodation in 2018 this is for a condo though 358 in 2008 when I was living in the city it was about 400,000 for a one bedroom and now for a one bedroom you're looking at 5 to 683 that's right it's not a house a house starts at 1.2 million for a tear down we're not talking about mansions here Beverly Hills a tear down in Vancouver best place on earth consumer goods pair of jeans have gone down a sofa's gone down uh, wireless speakers have gone down. Dishwasher has gone down in price. Why? 
Because you need a home to have this stuff. You need to actually own a place to buy a sofa and all this other stuff. I mean, you could rent a place and and with the amount of homelessness, I bet you if all those homeless people had jobs and they were working, you, you would see the price of this stuff go up because more and more people would be buying it. But hey, what do I know? I don't know nothing, man. All I know is they're selling $1.2 million teardowns in Vancouver. That's what I know. I say. So there it is. Oh, and this crap's all made in China now, too. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to kind of throw that out there, too. So that's what's happening, guys. Costs, costs, costs. So this is this is from this is from uh, StatsCan, right? So StatsCan, you multiply it by 1 point, uh, 14% times 1.6 and then add 2 on top. That should be the right number, usually. That's just a theory that they got out there. But yeah, for the food, we could have Canada's got the land and got the sun. We're not we're not even using one percent of the sun's energy, which we could be using. And I'm not talking about solar power. We could now with solar power and all the stuff we have now, we could have a lot of good greenhouses in Canada. I mean, ones to grow uh, uh, marijuana, ones to ones to to grow oranges, other ones to grow lime, other ones to grow avocados, uh, and then hemp to make clothing and hemp to make paper and stuff. So you could save the trees instead of s throwing billions of dollars uh, into global warming and, and carbon credits. Why don't they make greenhouses with that, with the, with, with some of the federalized money and just start growing hemp and using it for paper? Uh, um, medicinal reasons like for hemp, not marijuana, hemp. Uh, clothing, hemp made clothing is very strong, hard to tear, better than cotton. But no, we got to go green and give you guys our money. And that's what it's all about, guys. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I would like to know. Thanks for watching. This is the decade. So this is in British Columbia. It's pretty much happening everywhere else. I don't believe the numbers from StatsCan because they always massage them so it doesn't look that bad. Well, technically, I'm making more money now. No, you're not. You're making less. They keep printing more money. And... And the story goes on and on for the next 10 years. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to hit me up on Patreon or send me a tip in my tip jar. Uh, and it's on top of my channel there if you want to. At the top of the channel, on my channel, my YouTube channel, you'll find my uh, PayPal information. Thanks for supporting. And don't forget to subscribe.